everybody, welcome to another edition of Freedman Adventures. It's great to be with you all once again. I'll remind you all to hit the subscribe button there on YouTube. Hit that little bell so we can come to your house and notify you when we have a new show. And also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If freshwater fishing is your thing, then follow my kids over on Bass Bro. Same thing, they're on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. All right. This is a great show because I've got a really good friend here today. He runs the Freedom out of 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro, California. Tino Valentine. Tino, my man, how are you? Very good, Phil Friedman. Like I told you before, just getting older, balder, and fatter. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, well, actually, I lost some weight. Yeah. Thank God, I went yeah. to China and walked around with the Chinese for three years. They walk everywhere, man. I'll tell you, I, if I understand they have a menu book over there, 101 Ways to Walk Your Dog. <laughs> They would like. They'd laugh at that they'd too. Probably, that's I a hope funny they would. Way. I'm sure I just offended somebody wow, there. That's and trust me, there's got a lot be a lot more people offended hope, by the end of the day. Yeah, I like so that. if you're going to get offended right now, disclaimer. Okay, I'm not responsible for. Or no, I'm sorry. My bosses and 22nd Street Landing are are not responsible for any words that come out of my mouth. Paisano, These are all Strasser, Paisano, Strauss, or Jeff Jessup. No, no, they're not responsible. Who's responsible? Tino Valentine. I, I assume all responsibilities for anything that I say from this point forward. So if you're going to get offended, please grab your crayons. Go get an emotional support emu or something, okay? Go to your safe space. Just turn it off, okay? You're, you're, making, you're threatening me. You're making me feel... Uh, I didn't what think, is the word now that you say? I didn't think you were one of those type of no, guys. I'm not, That's good. Yeah. Okay. Let it rip, man. You okay. and I go back a long a ways. A long ways, Phil. Yeah, 976 yeah. tuna days. Way back when... Uh, when there was pterodactyls in our chum line. I know, there. man. Uh, you know, we were just laughing a second ago. You were running the Phantom. I brought Philip Patrick, Arturo, I forget his last name, Arturo Martinez, I think is his name, three kids, and you put us in the sea bass zone. And we're out there. This is at Catalina Island. Yeah. And you're like, you know, dude, what is going on out? You were busy, you know, looking at stuff. And then you come out and go, what? You know, I go, these freaking perch, man. They're, they're, this is like driving us crazy. All we're doing is like these little freaking nibbles. And you look at me and you go, dude, swing on that. And it was like, seriously. It was, yeah. And I go, yeah, uh huh. Whoa, shit. Well, and we started hanging sea bass and we were screwing that up in the beginning, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was foobar for sure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What you didn't mention that everybody should probably know is, is that we were fishing in the squid grounds for you that don't know what squid grounds are that's basically the serengeti desert it's all sand there's okay no there's no there. perch out there okay the only thing that's there is squid nest squid and voracious predators predators that are there to feed on all this squid so i knew for a fact there wasn't a blue perch within miles of our present location and I'm looking around, and other people are hanging fish everywhere, and we're not really catching anything. Yeah, you know the pros what I mean? out there, and, and, man. Yeah, the and I'm thinking, bros. okay, man, I got Phil Friedman and the boys. You yeah, know? he and knows he, what he's These guys, you know, should be catching stuff. And yeah. little did you know. Yeah, he's like, yeah, these perch are biting, and I'm like, dude, there's no perch here, man. It's, <laughs> it's probably a sea bass set the hook, and next thing you know, we started hanging fish. You know, we hadn't caught anything until then. I'm like, you guys got to be kidding me. How long has this been going on? Oh, about an hour or two. Like, are you flipping kidding me? We could have been done like an hour or two ago. So anyway, needless to say, we, we got done. We got done. They L- were limits, nice Limits fish. of blue perch, and they were nice ones, like 30 or 40 pounders. I think I mean? Earl was there that day. Earl the Pearl McVicker. Earl the Pearl yeah, was there. Yeah. yeah. I, we had yellow sea bass. Philip had a nice big howl of yeah. it. Good Limit, day. And that was on a boat called The Phantom. The Phantom, yeah. That was the, one of the first boat that... Uh, I was given the keys to... Uh, Who ran it before you? Mark Thompson? Oh, Mark Thompson Larry? And, and Larry Moore. Yeah. Um, there was quite a few guys, actually, that were really good fishermen. I have quite a history on that boat because yeah, yeah. when Philip was born, my son was born, uh-huh. being the outstanding father I am. Oh, yes. I was catching sea bass on board the Phantom with Captain Larry. See, that's good style Thank right you. there. You yes, know, no wonder your yes. kids fishing. You want, you, you, since, since this is the podcast where we're all going to get in trouble, yeah, my yeah, dad guaranteed. calls me up and he says, Hey, your wife's gone to the hospital and... I think the baby's coming. And I said, oh, geez, Dad, we're in a hell of a sea bass bite here. <laughs> he said, I know. But, uh, you know, and I go, am I going to get myself in trouble? Should I do this? Sure. Why not? And I said, hey, 
tell her we're at Kalmeni and we're running home. It's going to take eight hours and we'll be there pretty soon. Sure. Yeah, excuse, now I'm in big trouble. Excuse there, you know? 34B. I've used it a few <laughs> times in my life. <laughs> so anyway, we limited out on giant sea bass. Bill Beebe. I don't know. You don't Bill? know Bill. No. He was a no. writer for the Daily Breeze for years and years and gotcha. years. He was there. Eddie Pasilio was there. I don't know if you know him, but there yeah. was a lot of great guys. And Larry and the deckhand was Beaker. Craig Jacobs. Really? Yeah. My mentor. I blame these guys for all this, you know, getting me all Yeah, no, I, I blame him, too, for getting me into this industry. Uh, it, 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 uh, <laughs> Why do you say Beaker's your mentor? Well, well, he's the captain that ran the original Thunderbird, uh, right. him and, and, and Kenny Wager. Um, I can't even, it's 30 plus some odd years ago. Oh, um, my God, we're getting old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Look at you gray in your beard. What's going uh, on? Yeah, I got a touch of gray. Yeah. That was, uh, I don't. You know why? Why? Because I die. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 won't, I, won't, I wouldn't admit it. I know. Look. <laughs> yeah, shave I'm, it off. I'm almost there right there to yeah. you. I, if I stand in certain directions, I get like HBO and Cinemax. But I, in your case, I'm sure you get all of our cable channels <laughs> for free. Do. <laughs> so Beaker was your mentor. Beaker and, and Wager were the uh, captains of the Thunderbird. And I was just a pinhead and loved to fish and... You know, when I originally started fishing, I came out with my trout rods. I kid you not, the, the guides were held on by electrical tape. We got into a hot, flurried macro bite one time, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so much fun. And they're like, oh, my God, this guy is such a kook, right? You were know? you instantly and hooked on I fishing? was hooked. Yeah. I was hooked. I, I'd been fisherman, you know, before that. Mostly my whole life was surfing before this. You know, I'm a way better surfer than I am, or at least I used to be, a better surfer than I am, uh, you know, a fisherman. And then I got into fishing, and that just changed my entire life. It, the addiction factor was phenomenal. Did you know, you know what at I mean? that point that's what you want to do? I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And I could actually thank Beaker for being such a jackass. Yeah, I said it, Craig. Jackass, okay. Um, he would. He was one of the most toughest guys ever on the crew. That's back Beaker? when Beaker. Beaker. was a really nice oh, guy. Oh, he's got a heart of stone. You know, I mean, a heart of... Gold, yeah, you know so, what I mean, but uh, well, like how you mean, like he just like he he was hard, okay. Give you know some what examples. I mean. That guy verbally abused me and other crew members. Beaker, yeah, Beaker, yeah, yeah, and I mean all the way to if you didn't get up in time, this guy would run up, grab a trolling rod, tie on a, a dropper loop. If if you got shaken once or twice, you didn't get up, run down to the bunk room, put a loop around your foot, put it in free spool, drive up to, walk up to the bow of the boat, right? And go, all right, he's getting up, put it in gear and start yanking, cut the line, put it inside the wheel horse door, slam it. That person would get up, be so pissed, come up like, what the hell's going on? He'd be like, morning, pumpkin, time to go to work. Should have got up the first two times, okay? Stuff like that. I, I'll, I'll, that's the stuff I can tell you. Yeah, I can I mean, that's so, like, Dipley it, used to wake us yeah. up in a different way. Thank God, it, I can't talk about that. But. You know, he was rough. Then. He he was he was a hard ass. In I got to say, in, in a good way. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's when men were men back then, and and we I heard you. you you got thick skin. I got you hit over I mean? the head with a braille um, for a, by a guy named Joe Schilling in Redondo uh -huh. when I went up to the bait tank. No, I didn't go to the bait tank. I went up there and I went to cast my bait a second time, and he winged me over the head from up on the. Was, we don't cast bait twice on this boat. And I'm wow. like, oh, yeah. But, I mean, this that's is the way it was. Old, I'm back 63, in the so that was, I was 12. I'll be almost 60 in a few months. So, so I mean, yeah. I still remember that crap. Yeah. No, you thank know? God our memories still work because yeah. I guess that's one of the bit. first things that go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Only the stuff that my wife, <laughs> I have selective memory, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, I, I, I got an opportunity to uh, be both a deckhand slash a cook. And I, I'm Chef Jeff. I can cook stuff really well. You, you like know, to cook? I love cooking. Me too. You I know what too. I mean? I mean, I make some mean stuff. Um, but we started cooking, and you know, it. it on the it, Thunderbird. On the Thunderbird. Thing? Yes. Yeah. It, it's one of those things that you know. I'm, if you're not observant to what's going on around you, then you know you're, you're missing out a lot, large part of life. There's no question about it. And. I'd be in the, you know, the galley and, and looking where we were and I'd look where we'd set up and everything. So I was learning, even when I was cooking, on how to fish. Uh -huh. And it got to be the point where, you know, some of these days were slow and I'd bang on the window. Customers were like, God, can we move? You know, and I'm like, I'm just the cook. You know what I mean? Now, let me talk to the captain. And Beaker, him, you know, he'd be like, dude, yeah. shut the hell up. Don't tell me how to run the boat. You know, you just cook the cheeseburger. You want to flip in... 
you want to you know drive a boat go get a license and i'm like okay so i did you know what i mean and that, that they basically egged me on and and pushed my buttons to the point where you know i can do this Would do you, you think he was doing him? that for that reason or he was no i i think he was just genuinely you know being craig jacobs and, yeah. and god love him and and the guy just was a hard ass to me you yeah. know rode me all the time yeah and you know it 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 paid off because I'm one of those guys that, you know, if you give me a challenge, I will accept that challenge. You yeah. know what I mean? I'll, I'll I'll do my damnedest to prove you wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and to end up winning. I like winning. You know <laughs> what I mean? Kind of like an old president we used to have. Won't say that anything. That, that'll get difficult, that that subject. So You go anywhere at, you want to go. At any rate, um, as far <laughs> as uh, being a captain, I got my captain's license. And um, I'll never forget when... Uh, Mark from the Phantom, Mark Thompson, said, uh, here's your set of keys, okay? And he threw me the keys. I'd never driven a single screw boat before, ever. For all that matter, I'd never really driven a sport boat other than doing a wheeler across the channel, go straight, you yeah, know what right, I mean? So right. there was no experience. And we were at berth 55, and the wind was blowing down the channel, as you know, and it's just you know, a big windsock, yeah, basically. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm like, you know, I don't want to pull that. He goes, this is when you're going to get experience. So... Me, I'm like, okay, make a right-hand turn to go out. Well, the wind's blowing, coming down the channel. Next thing you know, the wind's got a hold of me. I'm going into the seawall. And I'm like, dude, you know, I'm going to crash. And, and I'll, I'll never forget that Mark Thompson evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way, rookie. Takes the wheel and drives this thing like a Fiat, man. Just vroom, 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 vroom. 16-point back turn, backs it out. And he looked at me, and I'm shaking like a leaf. I, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, right. I almost crashed. We almost, you know, hit the wall. He goes, what'd you learn? I'm like, uh, drive backwards in the wind. He goes, right, because you can't steer a single screw boat in the wind. You know what I mean? That was my first lesson in captainship. Yeah. And uh, again, it was a challenge. So he said, okay, come on, we're putting it back to the dock. You're doing it again. I'm like, no, no, no. You know. And he made me do it until eventually I got it right. And once I finally figured out how to get out of that harbor, I was itching at the bit to go out and catch some fish. Yeah. And well, we we went out and applied everything that I learned from guys like Craig Jacobs, Kenny Wager. And I did quite a bit of fishing around, you know, uh, Buzz, Brendan Dean down south, Bradley Phillips. You know, uh, I remember when he was a deckhand on the Fury and used to yell at all of us, you know, so that goes back a few years. So I, again, a lot of good friends. And like Buzz, were you going down there buying a ticket or yeah, you were a pinhead? Yeah, we, we were a pinhead what? kind of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Bradley prowler? was his second ticket on the Prowler and yeah. everything. And, you know, you learn, you should be learning when you go fishing. Well, if, like you said it already, though, you yeah. got to be observant. You got to open line. your eyes and soak yeah. stuff in, right? Yeah. And, and I like to, you know, as a captain, when people come out, we only have a small window of opportunity to teach people or at least try to teach people. And I always tell people, you know, every time you come fishing, there's a million things to learn. And if you remember one, two, three things. That every I, trip. Through every trip, then the next time you come back, you're going to be one, two, three times better a fisherman. Do you see yourself you know? more as a teacher than anything I, when you're doing I, this? Sometimes? I like to think so. Yeah, right. Because, you know somebody's got to pass this stuff down you yeah. know what i mean somebody taught me and i think it's only fair that i try to teach other people yeah and you know i it's i, I was very very fortunate to have the people that i got involved with in with to um uh, to give me such good schooling yeah. you know what i mean whether they were intentionally doing it or not but i learned i want to can say i, I learned from the best you Any other I mean? mentor that stands out in your head that really made oh, an impact oh, on you? You know, again, I fished with so many Raymond on the Toronado and and uh, just a, a, a lot of guys. Uh, you know, again, the memory floppy disk doesn't boot up as well no as problem. it used to. So though, I can't tell you all of them, but you get my point. There <laughs> yeah, was a absolutely. lot of guys that I learned from. And I like to think that not only did I take what they taught me, but I've put in my own time and I've discovered my own ta uh, techniques and tactics to, you know, outsmart fish. And I can tell you after doing this a long, long time, uh, I think it was Mark Thompson that told me, and, and it stands true to this day, um, fishing is like half luck. 
okay? It's it's about being in the right place at the right time. I like to say women, money, and fish. Yeah. Because if you think about it, that's what that is. It's it's about being in the right place at the right time. But, you know, with, with luck, I've seen it a, a million times where a guy comes on vacation and he's from Idaho and he comes out and he's got the ugliest looking jig in the boat and no one's catching anything. And all of a sudden, Idaho boy is Bendo. And you're like... What the heck, the the heck, you know what I mean? Never caught a, you know, a, a cold naked in Alaska, this guy. Yeah. And he's caught himself a 45 pound sea bass, uh, or, sea bass whatever. Yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? So that was luck. There was no skill involved. So you have to, you know, realize that luck is a lot in this. And I'd rather, as the saying goes, be lucky than good yeah. any day of the week. But, you know. Uh, and then there's the old saying that you make your luck. You, make your you do bite. make your luck by being in the right place at the right time. Right. And you study conditions and you study, uh, you know, bird life and, and water temperature and clarity before you leave the dock. There's so many parts to the equation that people don't really understand what it takes to provide not only action, but consistently go out and provide people with fish and what i like to say a memory that's going to last them the rest of their life Absolutely. to me that is more important than the fish because when you come fishing the last thing i want to do is take you in a snotty ocean where you're going to get seasick and look like green gumby okay that's no fun for me it's no fun for them and they'll probably never come back yeah okay but not only do I want you to come back? I want you to come back with a memory that you caught your biggest fish or a joke I told you, whatever. And that's, again... I hope you're going to share some jokes. I, I got a million of them, and I got to be real careful careful yeah, on which not one. On this show, I've already know. told you a few that will never make the air. Steve will edit it out, so <laughs> yeah. it gets too bad. Anyways, I, I got I like a million that. of them. I was hilarious. Yeah, Don't yeah. tell that. No, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Again, somebody will get offended. Yeah. But uh, at any rate... You know, again, you you pick up on little things along the way, and they can be so subtle it, it, that it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like a blue perch bite. Yeah, right. It turns into a sea bass. You know, and it's just part about being observant, paying close attention to detail, as Mark Thompson used to say all the time. You know, Tino, and that you know, paying attention is and being observant is tough. Uh, sometimes, but man, I, I have to say, you guys, your work ethic is ridiculous, and you've got to pay it. I mean, I think people, I've heard it at the Fred Hall show, like mm -hmm. Tino Valentine or or whoever. Wow, I wish I had a job like that. Go fishing, man! What yeah. an easy job. I yeah. wish I could do that. There's there, you have to be prepared for emergencies. You have to yeah. factor in weather, and then you got sleep deprivation going on. Pretty oh much. boy. Yeah, that, and then you know, like you're you're working fourteen straight or whatever. Um, yeah, being observant gets a little more difficult under those trying circumstances. A, a lot more difficult, and that sleep deprivation, especially around sea bass season, is uh, is brutal. And how do you put yeah. up with that at your? I mean, because uh, I'm my age, I, I need my sleep now. Yeah, I, I need my sleep, beauty <laughs> sleep especially. But I tell you what, man, it, it 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 only gets worse as you get older, and that's the damn truth. I don't yeah. care what anybody tells you. The golden years that they promise you, BS. Okay. I like the gold. I'm having a good uh, time. Yeah. Okay. Of course, well, I lost 150 uh, pounds. So yeah. There. Well, that that would help me out. Consider I could use it. You don't need a it. couple of pounds lost myself, <laughs> but uh, you know. It, it, it like I said, it only gets worse as you get older. You know, headaches, hangovers, injuries, and sleep deprivation. Yeah, you know what I mean. I have to have X amount of hours of sleep. Yeah, or you can't think. You straight. can't function. You know, right. or I'm just a, you know, ja just an ass to deal with. Excuse me, but I that's the proper term to use, and I think we've all been there. I'm at the point you, now you know? where somebody will say, "Hey, just go to YouTube and and you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and, and you'll be able to figure this out." Some problem I'm having with a computer or whatever, huh. and I'm like, "Not gonna happen." Tomorrow morning, four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be on it because I can think again. Yeah, but I'm you know I've been up since three and I've been doing sh stuff. Yeah, and so I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, the hardest board. the hardest part I think. Um, for captains, crew, and people that do this for a living is is the just 
non-stop go 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 yeah right we, we leave at 10 o'clock at night Look, we let's don't get tell everybody out there yeah okay go. well we're you know again on the freedom we we leave every evening at 10 p.m and we don't return to the dock usually until 8 p.m the next night we need to offload your fish we need to scrub the boat we need to unload and do some grocery shopping Basically, we're turning and burning. It's a 24 an hour day no, job. You got two hours of yeah, uh, yeah. leisure. So what are you talking we, about? We, we take every bit of sleep, a nap on the way home, whatever you can do to put some sleep in the bank um, to keep those engines running and to keep your mind active and working. You know what I mean? And when you, you know, don't have the sleep, you don't have the drive, you don't have the wherewithal, the wits to, you know, be sharp and make sometimes smart decisions you find yourself in left field and the hot dog concession stand like what the hell am i doing here <laughs> you know and that's part of like not having enough sleep yeah and again sea bass they you know again a mark thompson thing i keep referring back to him but i learned a lot from him and, yeah. and he was the one that basically deemed the phrase they are where you find them and they bite when they damn well please. So true. Don't make anything more out of that, and you'll be a lot more successful. You mean second-guessing yourself or moving? Second-guessing, and- moving and stuff. And, and, you know, people that have fished with me for years know that I'm probably one of the most impatient fishermen ever. If if you're not catching fish, we're not catching fish, I, I'm out of there. 15, yeah. 20 minutes, go, 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 go. Yeah. And you know what? At the end of the day, we might have hit 25 beaches and we might have thrown 495 squid onto those beaches. If we didn't catch anything at the end of the day, there's not one person on that boat that said, that guy did not try. Right. We tried the whole time. Yeah. Because, and I say this almost every night to my passengers in a, in a speech, you know, if you think that we don't care about catching fish, you're crazy. Right. Okay. Because... I care more about catching fish than you do. And that is apparent in how we go about fishing. Again, I'll try a million spots. If we don't catch fish for you, we don't make any money to bring home right, to our families. Right, there's a financial incentive to sure. start You know, yeah. the more fish we catch, the more money. Cleaning Cleaning fish blah, and blah, blah, tips, tips and whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So um, mm. we try hard, really hard, every trip. I want every trip to be not only limits of whatever we're trying to catch, but I, I want it to be fun and enjoyable and make a memory that's going to last a lifetime. And I have that in the back of my mind that was instilled on me through all the years of, of training and or people that I learned from that I found was so important, not only to keep the, the flame lit and the drive in you yeah. to do this for as long as, as I've done it and you've been around, you know, but... To see people smile, especially women and kids. Does that still mean a lot to you? That's everything. Really? That That's to great. me is the priceless That's part great, of the Visa man. commercial. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's Believe nothing I enjoy more than a kid that than a kid up. that has caught his first fish <laughs> with his dad and gives his dad a hug. I'll get a hug sometimes. You know what I mean? That's priceless. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Kids so, and women, huh? Kids and women. Do they, is it good-looking women? Is that why you're uh, uh, no, on that or why? No. With all due respect, we don't get a whole lot of good-looking women on oh, the fishing no. boats. Oh, no. You're going to get your ass kicked. I'm already here. in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've I had, do hey, not agree. We, hey, listen. So many and with all due respect, like if this. I say we got a lot of good-looking girls on the boats, my wife, wife's going to kill She's going to be pissed, too. So you I'm know, not going to lose. I'm not going to win so this. Gonna win so this. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, absolutely. More. That's what I just keep yeah. saying that over so, and over again. And, no, there are some good-looking women that have that come oh, on. Oh, here you go. You're gonna get. And, and you know what? I, I I try not to give them preferential <clears throat> yeah. treatment, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. But at any rate, um, <laughs> I do give women the the benefit of the doubt because that's not normally their game. You know what I mean? They're they're out there because they. You know, wanted to come out and see what it was like. Their husband's out all the time. And, you know, with men. They, do you find that women take instruction a little bit better than Oh, men without a doubt. Yeah, right? Them and, 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 then, and then, uh, then children and women, they're all ears. Yeah. You know what I mean? And men are kind of like, you're insulting their pride. You're, or, exactly. Yeah. You know oh, what I, I mean? Know There's that, guys. I that. That no matter what, and we all tell fish stories, you know what I mean? Dude, I caught a goldfish that big, you know what I mean? It's like, I've heard it all. I've heard a million fish stories. I've got a million fish stories. Oh, we'll start spitting you, you them know, out. Nah, yeah, I'll spare you. You need a mini series and a couple of months for that. But at any rate, we'll, uh, 
you know, we'll we'll show the women and and, and the ch- the the children a great time. And, and that all starts with good weather because for the most part, again, I don't want to see these people. But you can't control see, that. And I don't have control of that. And people under, need to understand that yeah. when they come fishing. We do the best possible. Uh, we have to for safety. Right. And, and no matter what, I don't care what anybody thinks, when we have to cancel a trip or I can't take you to where you wanted to go because you paid your price, it isn't because that I'm being a jerk, it's because I have to first and foremost consider safety. In this industry, it I mean, it, it's the Coast Guard's mantra. You know what I mean? It's, it's always safety first. Yeah. And and we have to consider that. So, you know, as, as much as we hate to do it, sometimes we've got to call the trip in the name of safety. And again, I, I don't want to make a terrible memory for you. Right. I, I, mean, I, I, I want you to... You know, come back, especially the women and children, you know what I mean? And and, and, and enjoy yourself. We and, just had this whole story. Now, that was on a private boat with Mark and Paul who rescued the little girl, Desiree. Yeah. Phenomenal so job, want, by the way. Walk. Thank you. Yeah, that was one of the, one of the most uh, emotional things. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm almost tearing up right now thinking about it because it was such a shock to me. I was like, my God, you, you know what I mean? Up, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you. I get a little teary eyed. I got a soft heart, but yeah, at any rate, that's great. It it was amazing to me that uh, we felt the same way. It, it was put on so well. So kudos to you. Thank you. I got to say, you. That. I mean, it just unfolded. And it was uh, my job. I thought was basically to 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 do the reveal at the right time and yeah. then pretty much get out of the way and let them converse. And, hey, couldn't and have it done was any beautiful, better. man. It was beautiful. Yeah, it really was. And I knew so, it was beautiful later because people like. Uh, Faith, who wrote a, a, a L.A. Times front page article, uh-huh. she had the same response. And then all these other people, not fishermen or anything, they're all breaking down and crying during that. So I knew yeah. that we captured something yeah. really safe. I, I, and that's I, what you're trying to prevent, though, is what I'm trying to say. Is yeah. You don't go in that bad weather, man. No. Have you ever no. lost anybody? or Not I, yourself, but do you know anybody? Who's, well, no. I, you Vince, know what? I don't I, know if you knew Vince. Who I, I, know, I, I, I remember and, Vince and I, I know Kenny... Uh, I, Kenny Phillips, years ago, he, he went out on a squid boat and never came back. Yeah. And I know a lot of people in this business that um, unfortunately aren't here anymore. Right. And we just lost another really good guy, Douglas Brink. Oh, my God. You know? That's, uh, that's, that's a sad one. That's, again, yeah. I, I get emotional thinking of that. But, Me too. Uh, that Me guy too. was the greatest guy ever. So, Super good you guy. Know, and it, it, it just, I think it's the older you get, the more people we lose around right. us, you know? and. It never gets easier. It does. I think it, I think it gets tougher. I really do, you know, because I think my clock's ticking. You know what I mean? One of these days I'll go, and at least, you know, when I go, there'll be a lot of people that go, that bastard always had a joke. <laughs> you know, and I, I always do my best to leave people with a joke. I don't care who you are. You could be a grocery checker. Let's hear a joke. And go ahead. I, I don't Let's know. Get, get us thrown off the YouTube. Oh boy, you're challenging me. <laughs> All no, right. I actually, okay. Yeah, you want to hear a good joke? Sure. Okay. This is a classic. I mean, money. Yeah. None of the housewives are going to like me, but don't worry this about it. It's only joke. The FBI. It is the FBI yeah. joke. Well, I don't know the joke. No, I told Morrison, you. I Mike Morrison yeah. said okay. So, anyways, uh, my bosses right now are probably just going to go. Oh no, Jeff Jessup. I if I start telling a joke, he walks the other way. He does. He that guy. Sit down, Jeff, and yeah, finish this yeah, show. Right, this right. is going to be good. Has yeah. he heard the FBI joke? Uh, no, I don't think so. Good. All right, okay. don't move, Jeff. Yeah, so, it. anyways, so there's. Uh, three guys that are applying to the FBI and the first guy walks in the FBI agent says take a seat here at the desk around here at the FBI it's about loyalty and we need to test yours right now opens a drawer pulls out a 45 puts it on the desk he says in the next room we have your wife sitting at another desk okay to show your loyalty you should have no problem picking up that 45 walking in the next room and putting a bullet in your wife the guy's like well I can't do that I love my wife 99% 99% of applicants can't. We're looking for the 1% that can. Thanks for applying out the door he went. <laughs> Second guy walks in, same thing, gun wife in the next room. He's like, God, I love my wife, but I really want to become an FBI agent. <laughs> so he picks up the gun, walks over to the door, starts turning the handle. He starts shaking and he can't do it either. Once again, FBI says, looking for that 1%. Thanks for applying out the door he went. Third guy walks in, picks up the gun, looks at the FBI. He goes, 
I've been married 32 years. This is going to be a flipping pleasure. <laughs> Walks into the next room, slams the door. The FBI agent hears, bam, 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 bam. The FBI agent like, holy crap, right? Next thing you know, here's the stuff flying across the room, breaking, crashing. The FBI is going, what the hell's going on in there? A minute later, the guy comes walking out. He's all ruffled up. The FBI agent goes, what in the hell just happened here? The guy turns around, some asshole put blanks in that gun. I had to beat the crap out of her with one of the chairs. <laughs> Money. Sorry, housewives. <laughs> oh, oh, kills me. I God. love telling that joke. <laughs> I don't think that'll get us canceled, will it? No, I hope not. That's yeah. a funny one. And, and again, back to you know getting canceled. It just the world we live in today. I, it just blows my mind because people get offended. And I mean, back in the day, we had you know comedians. Even TV shows, All in the Family and everything, you know, and comedians, Eddie Murphy, back before him, you know, you had uh, Red Fox and Richard Pryor, you know, and man, those guys just lit people up like Christmas Don trees, Rickles. Don Rickles. They mean rude, crude, socially unacceptable. Yeah. And it was funny. Right. And no one got offended. Right. We're in a we bizarre paid world now. to come and see these people and we enjoyed our time. You need to learn to laugh, people. You know? I agree, and and you need to be able to discuss issues. The, you know, yeah. the reason I don't do politics anymore. Yeah. I love politics. Yeah, I study politics. I'm I'm up on it. I've been yeah. that way my whole life. It used to be that you could you could be for candidate A, and I'm for B, and yeah. you and I'd say have a civil conversation. We, and well, and maybe get heated. But yeah. at the end of it, we'd say, okay, cool. You yeah. know, you know, you, you here, don't beer. like the tax plan. I do like it. Yeah. And, you know, those days are, are gone. Long gone. And, yeah. and plus any. Any logical argument, it seems like to me, is gone too. Is gone. So you say, I like this uh, this situation in politics because A, B, C, D, E, F. And yeah. the, the response is, you're a racist. Absolutely. You're a communist. Yeah. A I don't want to make this a liberal. A bigot. You're a, yeah. And you're yeah. like, well, wait a minute. That's not an answer to the A, B, C, D. No. Well, you're. And it's like, what's happened to logic what's happened to common sense just a conversation yeah. so we can talk this out it, it it's gone it, it's gone and and i'm i'm like we don't want to get too political no we that. want to get too political because oh i trust me i got a lot of them but again i would offend somebody you know what i mean and and i'm not trying to go conservative I, I, on both sides i guess conservatives will call yeah. liberals communists and you know yeah let's just have a freaking discussion on I, the issue yeah i can i can say and I'm almost 60 years old, okay? I, I never, ever voted my entire life, okay? And until this last election. And I'm really sad that I got into politics. Really? Yeah, you're I, disappointed. I, I, I'm disappointed because I liked it way better in life Without when all, all I did was headaches. go surfing and fishing and la, 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 la. I didn't care. I had more <clears throat> important things. And now everything I hear... I can't watch the news anymore. Well, it's de can't. it's depressing. Why don't you just you get know out what I mean? Go surfing and fishing and again. forget all this nonsense. I, I if I go surfing right now, I'd probably have to change my name to Skip and then Bob. Okay, I, I need to really get in a little better more shape before <laughs> I go fishing again. By I'm the way, surfing. you and I got to meet up down on the beach. Someday. Yeah, you like corvina fishing. I don't love you? corvina fishing. I stalk them uh, in the uh, summertime. People think you're nuts. They're in three inches of water, right. and They're you have to have polarized glasses. And if you don't, you know. You'll walk right over them. They'll they'll be behind you, and I'm literally fishing in three inches of water. And you hook these things; they're like bonefish in the flats. They're, uh, absolutely, and people just freak out. So they're let's like, let's, yeah. let's talk about this oh, for yeah, a minute. Yeah, sure, we're on this sure. Thing. How do you fish corvina? What do you fish with? Do you are you a bait um, fisherman? I'm a bait Obviously. fisherman, and for the most part, that's sand sport crabs? bait mentality. Sand crabs, you know, and, and I catch kind of match the hatch. I, I catch them, and literally, it, even if you have you know, a soft shell, little jelly bean, as I like to call them. Right. And like a number 14 hook, four pound, two pound fluorocarbon. Are you doing all that? I'm doing all that, oh, buddy. Wow. Okay. And yeah. you might have to cast on the same fish and walk 150 yards down the beach and cast on that same fish 25, 30 times before he finally gets dumb enough to eat your jelly bean. It's so much fun. And though, once you it? hook one, it's like anything else. It's, you, you, it's the winning part of the equation. It's why we do it. It's why fishermen come fishing. Uh, the tug of the drug or drug of the tug, yeah, whatever right. you want to call it. But 
you know, there's something what, really bitching about it, fishing the beach, though. Too, huh? it, 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 to me, not only you know, do you get to breathe in fresh air. You're walking along the beach. What more beautiful place? I live at the beach, and for that reason, you know what I mean. It's it's paradise, you know. It is, and you get in your own little world. You can put politics behind you, and you can put pressures behind you, and bills, and just whatever. You put it all behind you, and you concentrate on doing something you love, being someplace you love to be, and that's why. I think as fishermen, we spend so much time doing that because it puts us in our moment of Zen. It puts us in our place. Absolutely. You know, fishing takes you to the most beautiful places. That's it. It allows you, it allows you to forget everything that troubled you, at least for a short period of time. We all have to come back and deal with that. But for that moment in time, you, you can't take that from someone. I didn't realize what a sentimental guy you are. You're tearing up again. I, you know what? This is the and fourth time. I, I'm is sorry. I got I'm, I got I'm some dust horrible, in my eye. Is it because I'm a terrible host? You're crying, <laughs> or is it, you are a sentimental guy, aren't you? I I, you really I, I have a soft heart. I yeah. really really do. You know what I mean? And and uh, I've been called a lot of things in my life. Probably never sentimental. You know what I mean? Um, is this the first time? No, no. We 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 all have our moments. You yeah, know what I no, mean? I can but, see that. Uh, though. It's 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 close to my heart. You know what I mean? As far as uh, fishing and and my love of fishing and uh, just basically living life to its fullest. Yeah, absolutely. You know well, what I mean? You're only here for so much time, so you might as well enjoy yeah, when it. When you get to be 60 like you and I are, I'm older yeah. than you. Yeah. Man, you can just look back at it all and go, where the right. hell did that all go? And yeah. I don't have that much left anymore. And I might as well be doing what I enjoy and doing what's right in life now. And, you know, t- today is my 10-year uh, sobriety birthday. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. And so, man. yeah, I look at some wasted years there when I was drinking too much and screwing mm-hmm. up too much. And mm-hmm. now, you know, I, I often say, Tino, well, now I'm going to get teary. We're yeah. Gonna- <laughs> <laughs> Tissues. Um, I often say that being a drunk was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because, man, I value every second of every day right now. Before... Yeah, I didn't like I do now. It really drove home how important things are to me. Well, I'm I'm blessed, I should say, because I'm still a beer drinker. Love my beer, love yeah. my Corona. You know what I mean? And I uh, I was just given the God given ability to say when. That's great. you know what I mean. Yeah, and I have never ever gotten any major trouble i say notice major you know what i mean we've all gotten minor troubles whatever they fights or this that and the other from yeah. alcohol bottles of bravery are not good right you know what i mean we all have learned our lesson there but i'm able you know on on, on most given nights if i've worked hard or whatever have an ice cold beer and and and, and you know come have a couple of beers go to bed and and wake up the next day and be a productive. I was the you same know, way. You, you know, know, I could do one or two bottles of vodka, and then you know that yeah, was enough. Yeah, the vodka. Yeah, exactly what you're little, talking little, about. Little, little nar- hey, you know. what is the state of fishing right now? It's pretty damn good. I look yeah. at the freedom, and you're right up at the apex of the boats all the time with big numbers of fish. But how do you like this coming season? How does it look to you? Ooh, um, do, are we going to have that bluefin again? Or, it's know. like investing in Google and yeah, Microsoft. You just so cannot. let's look back. How was yeah. the, the previous year? Um. The last couple of years, let's call it the last three or four years, without a question of a doubt, the best bluefin tuna fishing I've ever seen. I think that we've ever had from stories that I've heard from the old timers. Um, I I do have a little bit of a theory on, on part of the reason why, and I could be completely wrong, but again, it's my opinion, my theory, but... When we had uh, Fukushima and that water got radioactive, okay, bluefin, along with albacore, they have tails, they swim, they do a big circle in our ocean, migratory pattern. And I know that a lot of that tuna was at one point going through that body of radioactive water. Mm -hmm. And that selenium, once it gets in that fish's tissue, it never goes anywhere. And I know at one point, um, the Asian fish market, which is worldwide, huge. Yeah. They didn't want anything to do with purchasing that bluefin tuna. 
And as a result, I think it was left alone for quite a few years. Oh, okay. You know, because they didn't want to purchase and ingest mass quantities of selenium. Who the heck would, right? Yeah. So I think that they were importing a lot of that from the East Coast. And I say, I think. And if I'm wrong, I apologize from anybody or, or the professionals out there. But uh, that is from what I understand that had been t told to me by a few different people. And um, since that time, that's changed. But it allowed that species of fish to go untouched and uncommercialized for some time. And we all of a sudden had this huge population. I'd never have ever seen the amount of bluefin tuna. It's in incredible. my wildest dreams, for as far as your eyes can see, millions and millions and millions of bluefin tuna all feeding, which means our ocean is alive. It's healthy. It's well. It's well. Yeah. When you have a bait source to substantiate that much food for that amount of prey, we've all seen Discovery Ch Planet, you know, Discovery Channel, you know, you know, and Blue Planet. That is what we saw in all directions on a daily basis. God. I saw more stuff on my meter where I'm like, is this thing broken? Because the fish just kept coming. Like, are you kidding me? I'm trying to change, turn the gain down because there was just that much fish. Wow. And, you know, as we all know with bluefin, you can see as much as you want. You know what I mean? Sometimes they, they bite. They, sometimes they bite. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. If anything, it's a good show. And at least the passengers knew that they were in the right, right place zone. at the right time. It just wasn't Mother right. Nature time and yeah. bite time. And again, there's a lot of factors that go into yeah. that. You got to have the right bait, what they're feeding on. You got to match the hatch. And, Floral you know, carbon, is that important? Very important. It is. Very, very important. Uh, matter of fact, I think, especially with tuna fishing, if you are not fishing fluorocarbon, a section of fluorocarbon, you're kidding yourself. Really? Yeah. Do you I, see it all the time? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Something I, I saw a few years back, and matter of fact, I even put out a report on 976 tuna, and I had literally had a couple of tackle guys thank me, the tackle shop guys, because I inadvertently um, helped out the glow-in-the-dark sliding sinker craze oh does that is and, that and big it, it was that big yeah. literally it it i had i hadn't seen it you know what i mean we've been mm -hmm. using sliding sinkers i've seen it used for 20 30 years yeah for sea bass yellowtail at the islands fish and squid and it did it made a big difference <clears throat> and for those of you that don't know what that really represents the top of a male squid has got a sperm sack let's say and that is white as glow in the dark can get and when you put that on your line that slides down to a squid, whether it be live or dead, it's a trigger mechanism in a fish's brain. And it's like, oh, a big male. Look, filet mignon, okay? Yeah. And you get more bites without a question. So on this one given day, we we're fishing bluefin. And I think we had two fish total for the day. And they were nicer grade fish, 50 to 80 pounds, something like that. This is the first year I think they showed up. And we we're drifting through just, you know, just huge schools and they wouldn't bite. And this guy hooks up, right? And we fight this thing for like a half hour, 40 minutes, and we get the thing in, right? And I happen to notice, I'm like, oh, look at that. A one, one and a half ounce glow in the dark sliding sinker. What do you know about that? So I made a mental note, right? Something you want to pay, pay a you know, attention to close attention to detail there. And, oh, a couple hours go by, and I'm just like, please, end day. You know, it's just long. We got one fish on the boat, and all of a sudden, hook up. And I'm like, no way. There's, you know, somebody else. And I go back there, and it's the same guy, okay? And no kidding, it was, a, it was the same glow-in-the-dark sliding sinker. Really? Yeah. And those are the only two fish that we caught all day. Wow. And did you see that play out in the few? Uh, and, and at that point, I'm like, well, Hello, McFly. You probably guys want to start stocking uh, glow in the dark sliding sinkers. Yeah. So, you told Morrison to start stocking. I, I didn't tell him indirectly. I just put it out on a blurb on yeah. the. You know, if you guys you know don't have any, I'd highly recommend getting them. Yeah. And I kid you not, we started seeing everybody carrying glow in the dark sliding sinkers, and it made a huge difference. It made a world of difference, and. Um, between the glow in the dark sliding sinker and the fluorocarbon, um, the right size hook, that was the right equation 
to for get the for the bluefin tuna. Floral carbon. There's, without a question of a doubt. Wow. So, you know, that's what squid. And, you know, with fin bait, it's a different deal. You need a smaller hook and smaller line. And with the size of these fish, that's the last thing you want to usually go do because these things will just tear you, tear you up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're hunting bear with a BB gun, as I like to say. And yeah. it, for the most part, you know, the guys that are getting the really big fish, and unfortunately with the Freedom, we have so many passengers, we don't have the ability to fly the kite. Again, what do you do? Select a number at 1 through 25, 1 through 35, however many passengers you have, or tag team it and let 35 people and cut it into 35 sections. You know what I mean? You only have a chance to catch one or two fish on the kite with a flying fish. Yeah, I right. wish for the most part that... <laughs> We could fly, you know, 30 kites at the same time. Can't it, do it. You can't do it. Right. There'd just be limits of tangles. Yeah. So um, we concentrate on hopefully the smaller grade, the catchable grade fish. Because, again, we want everybody to bring home well, fish. smaller grade nowadays is, is 50 what? to 80 pounds. Yeah. It's yeah. like a joke, It's, it's right? like, oh, dude, you caught a dink. It's only yeah. 80 pounds, right? Yeah, you... Guys are catching 350s, close yeah. to four. One of my it's, buddies caught a 386 last year. Yeah, it's amazing. Stupid. Like Again, you said, it's the best. I've, I've, ever I've, seen. I've never seen anything like it. So we're really hoping that that not only returns, but sticks with us indefinitely because it's a fishery. It's a world class fishery right here in our backyard. Yeah. And we're so fortunate to have what we have not only with the islands, um, our island chain out here. Hmm. Catalina, Cat, Clemente, Santa Barbara, Barbara Nicholas. Nicholas. Um, you know, without a question of a doubt, I've noticed over the years the f the more fishermen and the more boats, the farther out you got to go, and that's just common sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? It it it's you got to go farther to catch better grade fish, and the fish, I think, instinctively they know it. They know that when they see a million boats that. I got to get away from here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just saw Fred and Tom and Bill and they're gone. And yeah. it's probably from those boats. You know what I mean? So they'll find sanctuary at these outer islands. And we're lucky enough to be able to travel that far to these outer islands on a nightly basis. Later on in the year, obviously, when the fish get on the outer banks, the Cortez and the Tanner, we like to switch over sometimes and do the Damn. day and a half schedule. That way we're able to stay in the fishing grounds a lot longer. Uh, a lot of times we will do the overnight trips to the Tanner Bank, but you want to talk about putting pressure on, you know, a captain. You, that's why we're losing all the hair. You know what I mean? Because you have X amount of hours to fulfill that dream or, or dream whatever, or or right? that that mission. limit mission yeah. to get people fish. Yeah, and usually we got to get out of there by you know one o'clock at the latest twelve thirty yeah, to get home by 7 30 so or eight o'clock right? and again to turn and burn so you're gonna make all the right decisions that's it and, and, it, and you know when you're pulling the anchor and you're making a move and you hear somebody down out your window saying where is this a-hole going does that bug you? i mean i know you've it, heard it it, it bugs all, all of us it. we all because heard it, you know what i mean but i have to consider the source because he doesn't you know, understand or she most doesn't understand. of it's, it's amazing nowadays we have this internet fisherman <laughs> Okay, and these guys aren't from old school, you know. They have no idea. It, it, and honestly, Phil, I I see this new breed of fishermen that if you, they don't catch something this big that they can put in front of the camera and take a picture for social media and show the world how great they are, you suck as a captain and you suck as a crew. And that boat section, I'm never coming back. And they they will just beat you up in the internet really yeah and, and i mean I, i've seen it you've had that happen to you i've i've not well yeah I, I can say so but at the same token i've seen it happen to other boats you know yeah. what i mean and i and it, it's just it's unfortunate you know what i mean that somebody can be a keyboard warrior and yeah. try to ruin a business and people's hard work well, there's a lot of and again what there. we've talked about and how hard it is to do this on a daily basis yeah. the sleep yeah. deprivation and everything and to have some guy you know that wants to be zane gray and he's been fishing for a year um tell you fish stories about the three thousand pound goldfish that he caught in his pond yeah. you know again i've heard <laughs> these fish stories like bro i get it time out go to bed everybody's <laughs> trying to sleep right but we've all been there and and we you know again fish stories are good that's what keeps keeps the fishing industry interesting speaking of fish yeah. stories mike morrison again the manager at 22nd Street Landing, yeah. the insane man that we know he is. Yeah. 
The sheep's head story. I don't know oh, the sheep's head story. Oh, God, Lord, you're not going to do this to me. Please, I want to hear the sheep's head story. <coughs> the sheep head story. Well, there is, um, this goes back some time. There is a biology, uh, biological uh, explanation of the sheep head. And for all of you at home that don't know, sheep head are all born female. Correct. Okay. And depending on the, the the health of the reef that they're living on, if there are more males on that reef than females, then the female sheephead will stay, you know, a female for a lot longer. Hell, I've seen nine, ten pound female sheephead before, and sometimes you see two pound males and it dep- directly proportional it's pretty on, incredible you think incredible it, right? the, yeah. what a way to yeah. keep your species going yeah. you know yeah. like hey there's no males hey bo- you know sweetheart let's uh, let's turn into a male but you know <laughs> they automatically instinctively know we got we need more males so yeah. they'll turn into a male at a smaller and that helps keep their species going and um that's the biological uh explanation there is also uh-oh, here uh, we're going to get into trouble now. A Let's religious uh, thing. See, when God made the sheep head, he made them all girls. And when he decided, decided that you became smart enough, he turned you into a male. Oh, no. I just offended some women there. Oh, oh boy. So yeah, that's the ap- sheep's head story? No, no, no. That's just the beginning. So after oh. he's turned you into a male, now you got nothing but drinking buddies to go around and have sex with young females. He was thinking when he made the sheep head. That's the, <laughs> that's the religious one. But there was um, a, a guy, one, a buddy of mine over at Catalina Island, and he, uh, he was part of the Chumash Indians. And the Chumash Indians... This guy? You know? This guy, yeah. He's, he's like third, fourth generation. Oh, okay. the, the, Catalina used to be yeah, right. inhabited with Chumash 9, Indians. 9,000 years ago they had. Yeah, yeah. when pterodactyls used to fly around there. Yeah. yeah. So at any rate, um, he invited me to a Chumash Indian ceremony oh, over I there. And I mean, it was one of the coolest things ever. And I got a chance to learn the sheephead call. And the sheephead call has been passed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years. You're BSing me now. No, 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 really. These people know how to call sheephead from the cliffside and it able to gather. There was hunters and gatherers, you know, and the, and they would the hunters would go in and gather these sheephead by doing the sheephead call. And and again, it took hundreds of years not only to to learn this and be, you know, this fortunate enough broke, isn't it? <laughs> to to learn this, but you're you're killing me right now. Um <laughs> Trying to keep calm here. Um, you had to have been fortunate enough to learn this, and I was. And they taught me, and I practiced, and I practiced until finally I got it. And and now when we go fishing, I use the sheephead call. And man, we've had limits of sheephead for for many. Do you many do trips. it on the PA? No, I have to do it in person because that way you get the actual gist of it, you know. And and you have to be on the rail because the P- PA kind of scares them. But yeah, sheephead goes something like this. You know, watch this carefully. This is the okay. call. This is the call. Yeah. That's the sheep head call. Oh, you want to edit that out because that is something mentally you will never forget for as long as you live. Yeah, no kidding. Did, did we get that on Get Good? Yes, I think you can zoom in on I'm that. sorry. I, I've ruined it. Do you some, do that on every trip? Uh, no, only on the ones that are requested. And well, I, I, if I go on the Freedom, I'm requesting the sheep's head. Oh, my Lord. That hurt my lips now. And and for the most part, <laughs> that's probably going to get, I'm going to get shelled like a pistachio the from Chumash some the Indian, Indian sheep sheephead head call. call right yeah. here. And, and, and it's, it, it's, it, it worked for it. many, many years. That is really incredible. Man. So, at any rate, um, can we get on to another subject yes. there? Yes, okay. thank you. I want, our, I want <laughs> our people out there, whoever they are, a um, $100 challenge to tie a oh. dropper loop as fast as Tino Valentine. A dropper yeah, loop is I, a I, knot that we, a use knot that for, we used if, uh, in most, for, what? For, for really any kind of fish, but we use it in the squid grounds. And uh, usually the, the dropper loop is a weight on the bottom. And a loop about four feet up off the bottom and we use live squid and the reason for that is the nest is on the sand and if there is a squid sticking four feet up above the sand or these eggs where the predators come in there it's an easy target so it's a great rig to use 
And you can even reverse it and put the weight in the loop and the hook at the end and drag it along and do a halibut drift. So it's multi-functional as far as the knot. But yeah, I've been uh, tying the knot now for 30 something years. And uh, I remember Greg Jacobs back in the day, yeah. we would fish the, the squid grounds and then we would have a two, five mile move and you had 30 minutes to tie up 25, 30 people's dropper loops. And if you didn't, he'd come out, you got everybody tied up? And I'd be like, well, no, you're like, you know, you get on me, right? right? So I had to figure out a way to tie a dropper loop until one day he came out, you got them all tied up? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, be loney, you do not. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Everybody's like, did, did he? Get, did you guys help him? No, he actually did it himself. So it, 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 I finally figured it out, you know what I mean? And I've tried to teach people how to do this knot and I have to go in slow motion, and even then, people come back years later. Dude, could you do that knot one more time? Maybe for we can me? do it twice, slow motion and fast. I, I will. So I let will. me ask you yeah. this. Yeah. Have you ever had anybody beat you? Not even close. Get out of here. Nobody. Not, not even close. Not another deckhand or skipper no, or captain no. or anybody. I try to teach my what about deckhands. You, Steve? Do you not tie a dropper loop? I do, but I don't think I can beat. Nowhere. Yeah, I, I, know, I, I, I threw out challenges over the days and won quite a few cheeseburgers. Are you throwing beers, one out I, right now? I, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I'm not as fast as I used to be. It, it definitely, I've lost a little kick in my get along. You know what I mean? Well, but I, at one point, I think it was four seconds, man, probably five or six seconds. Hey, is somebody so, gonna time this? Alex, are you? Can you time this? Timer guy. Yeah, we got a timer. Yeah. Anyways, right, we we have a rod right here that we brought in because. Here, there we go. Oh, you already tied it. Yeah, no, no wonder. We're, we have a, a weight tied on here, and the weight is is uh, is is good for uh, to keep the the line down. You know what I mean? It, it kind of you need pressure on one end, and you need pressure on the you other end. Hold that I want you to hold that. Okay. So, well, if I can, now. here we go. Yeah, if I can do this for you, this um, is amazing. This is the the. Are you gonna? Can you? Can you do this and do the sheep's head call at the same time? Impossible. Okay. And don't Thanks. don't ask me because uh, I guarantee you that, that that can't be done. You need both hands. But um, you you want to grab probably about this much line if you're seeing that, you know, and, and start your loop about here. And I'm, I'm going to stand up. It might be a little easier for me, okay? Hold that right there. Yeah. And it goes something like this. Ready? Yeah. Go. Here's your dropper loop. That is freaking fast. Okay, and for the most part, and that is perfectly that, tied. That's perfectly tied, that. and I have tied this knot one million seven hundred and forty-seven thousand times in my life for passengers, and it works. Three point seven one. I just beat my world record three, right there. Did you? Oh yeah. I, you on three second. minute adventures. Three on three minute adventures. I feel honored, lucky right there. Oh, so yeah. at any rate, that was amazing. Yeah. Is there um, some sleight of hand trick that you did there now, or like is this like? No. I wasn't paying attention. Was that not there before this all happened? I don't think so. That's pretty damn no, good. No, that was uh, that just and again I could probably do that. Want to do another one? I'll yeah. do another one do because we, want we slow use. Or? We use, yeah. One more fast one, one more one slow one. Oh, okay. All right, you got to do two more. All, all right. Are well, you timing again? You know what? This is amazing. Do, do you have that pair of scissors outside? Is there a Guinness Book of World Records? Uh, I don't know, this? but that would be cool, would it? I don't think normal people got, have any no, idea what a yeah. dropper loop is. Guinness Book of World has just inducted a new dropper loop. Yeah. Hall of Fame. <laughs> all right. At any rate, let me cut this because, again, it really assists in... Uh, I, I guess the counterbalance of you of uh, or just pressure having a weight on the bottom. We have news media here now. You may have to do that cheap side call again. Uh, do no, we get that? No, no, sorry. Oh, yeah, that, that, gonna... You don't want to see that. Trust oh, me. I think they, they would love that actually. Oh boy, this is the hardest part about getting old is seeing fishing line, especially when you're fishing corbina. You to tell me. Oh I'm my lord, eighty years old. Might now. might as well be uh, using spider web. So at any rate, you want the fast one again? Okay, we're gonna yeah. see if we can beat three point seven one. Um, ready, set, go! Oh, dropper loop. Three point eight three. Oh, I almost had it, but at any rate, you get the really? gist. This is again. Um, Does your sinker or your hook go there? No, the hook goes in the loop. The, yeah. the weight's on the bottom, and again, the reason for this is. You want to get that bait suspended. up, suspended above a squid nest. And again, yeah. when these predators come in in the morning, primarily at gray light, they're looking for these squid that aren't back in the nest or haven't gone into deep Good water. Good rig for white sea bass, One of the tail. best rig right here ever for 
white sea bass, yellowtail, halibut even. Man, we caught mm -hmm. tons of this. Um, if you are using this knot, may I recommend highly using the Palomar. And I want to give you guys a really good explanation, the reason for that. 99% of the time you're hooking big game and you just take your hook and you put it through the eye like people like to do right. and then wrap it back around your hook, okay? And you'll hook your dream fish, your 45 pound sea bass yeah. and it runs and all of a sudden it breaks. And what happens? This comes in and it's cut from both ends and you have two single things. And the reason that happens is because a lot of the manufacturer's hooks where they're machined, the eye, That's it's a sharp. razor blade yeah. in between that. That eye does not come down and meet and is not milled to perfection. And when that, you just loop it around, that line gets in that little razor blade and there's enough pressure and it just cuts this like two pound. Gotcha. Okay. So you want to tie a Palomar and, you know, without having a giant hook, you basically do a knot and then go over the top of the hook, okay? And gotcha. at that point, if this was the eye of the hook, your line is on the end of the eye. It's not in the gap, and gotcha. it can pull as hard as possible. Matter of fact, if one of the lines even breaks, the knot is so strong that the other single strand will stay connected. That's great. And you can still catch that fish. So. Do you need him to do that slowly one more time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're, now we're going to do. The, are you going to time him on this one? Oh, do you need a hook? You want to? Um, I, I can. I can show you. And I don't know if you want to do a, a, any form we're of. We're only doing on time. Okay. Twenty, 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. Good. Oh, now you're putting pressure on me. Yeah. So, anyways, again, this is a ring hook, which is you know probably a, a really good thing because it helps me see a lot easier. <laughs> but again, if you just slide your hook through that and then go over the hook one time and pull and cinch, right. it goes right into that gap, okay? This is a ring hook, so that's not the case. Yeah. And again, it, the Palomar is just set it through the eye, you tie a knot, and then go back over the hook. Give it a little lick and pull straight down. Now, as you can see, both yeah. strands are on the yeah. end of that hook. They are not in contact with the eye and the gap, which is a razor blade, and, and that is a must. And I'm guessing if you don't know how to do that and you walk on the Freedom, guys will, will show you how, right? Every time. Good. Our crew awesome. is as good a crew as you can find anywhere on the planet. Absolutely. You know, these guys, again, we all thrive for the same thing. We want to make this not only a memorable experience, but we want you to come home with big bags of love. Yes, of just you. fillets that and you know that you'll have for the next couple of weeks and get you back out here absolutely so but again i want you know everybody to one learn one at least one thing and if i'm going to teach anybody anything that would probably be i can do the slow motion one without cutting this one because okay, it's cool. it's not a speedy thing but at any rate um pretty darn good what you want to do is basically you want to just take the bottom line and this and create a loop okay so there's your loop Okay, you want to grab this line and the main line and you want to twirl them together. Okay, once you've done it four or five times, you open it up, grab the other line, pull down. Okay, you yeah. can't do that any, any slower than that. And with word by word, blow by blow description. Damn, that is awesome. So man. that's the that's the four second dropper loop, which 3.71. Still taking challenges, by the way. Beers, cheeseburgers, hundred dollar bills. bills. We're in. I, I, I'm looking for it. Anyway, squid crowders. What squid is that? Squid crowders. About? We um, we'll decided. See that on your shirt. Yeah, we decided to um, finally go and, and do a little project that we've. Oh, I've been building crowders for you know twenty something years, what whatever. Is a squid, a squid crowder, crowder basically, don't for don't know, is uh, two long poles, and on the bottom half, I would say, of those two long poles is a monofilament net created a bag so that when the squid come in at night to your light, which it's attracted to, you're able to push down real far underwater and lift up like a big bag and catch this live squid. And this live squid, again, one, you know, market squid will catch you 
the biggest fish you've ever caught yeah, in your it's entire super life. Important, right? And and it, it's one of our best baits. The candy bait. Candy right? bait. You know what I mean? And pretty much anyone can catch a fish with a live squid. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, pin it on. It doesn't swim. Unless you're in a sea bass area and you think it's blue perch that are biting, then you get right. right. Yeah, you yeah. want to swing on those. But yeah. I've I've dubbed it and nicknamed it a booger on a hook. Because basically that's all it is. It is a big booger. Okay. It doesn't swim, doesn't pull line. You can fish 40 or 50 pound, and when the fish come through in the morning and are keyed on the squid, they just they will eat in. that thing, and your chances of catching it with a right rod and reel and tackle are really good because of the fact it doesn't swim. Just a booger. Yeah. And yeah. again, it it uh, uh, children, women have caught monsters and just had to hold on you know what i mean and and again that puts a smile on my face when that happens so so squid crowders are for private boaters, it, it, right? it, they're for anyone or, i've made i've boaters, made yeah. them for not only the squid commercial guys i've made them for the squid or for the uh, commercial sport fishing guys many of my friends that run the boats i've made crowders for them and uh, all the way to the private boaters uh the uh parker fleet loves them because not only do there's four eight foot poles they snap together you have two 16 foot long poles now and you get done with it you break it down to an eight foot pole you throw it in your bag and instead of punking it back and forth to home uh every every day on every trip you throw it in your forward v berth lock it up and it's good to go that's you awesome. know yeah and is there a website or how do uh, yeah squidcrowders.com uh, it's the only website in the world to my knowledge that I'm, sells squid crowd. That is awesome. Yeah. Man. So and that keeps uh, you busy in the off season. In the I off imagine, season. Right? Yeah. You know, like so you need to be busy. You uh, need yeah. To no, it, 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 yeah. I need a little vacation. What you do know? you have down, down there? I've got, I've got a, a couple of um, t shirts. Uh, your your yeah, son, I, I thought he was going to come, but you can give oh, him one. I'll forget him. I don't but, care uh, about him. I brought you a. a a token squid crowders t shirt. I'm honored. I, I'm presenting this cheap little plug. There's a Squid Crowders oh, logo. I love that, and, and, man. That's and great. And there's a story behind this, and, and, and I have to tell you this story because it's so cool. One yeah. of my buddies, he's a computer genius, right? And we couldn't figure out how to make a net because it didn't come out on a T-shirt. It was all washed out. If you try to, you know, copy and paste something from the right. internet with just a monofilm, and it just wouldn't work. Yeah. So this guy went out to his garage, you know, he was doing something with his garage, and he happened to look up in the rafters, and he saw these red poles we had just talked about this and he was like, what the heck is that? And he brought it down. They were a pair of ski poles. So one of them was broken. He goes, ah, you know, I'll strip this thing down. So he stripped it down. He was like, you know, I got to find a net. And he looked over and there was a trout net with a hole in it. So he cut the trout net. He used electrical tape, taped the trout net. And there was only one, took a picture of it, did a mirror image, flipped it over. It. And there's my squid crowder. That's awesome, man. The Kraken, by the way, there. Yeah, I love so that. So at any rate, uh, really good Thank shirts. You. They're they're I'm dark. Honored. That's for the sun. Spread the love. Thank you. Um, but they're they're uh, really good quality, and they're great fishing shirts. And for the most part, uh, we're having a problem supplying and yeah, demand right. everybody because of supply chain. Su no, yeah, yeah, supply okay. chain is all back ordered right now. We've got fifty ships sitting in front of Huntington Beach. Yeah. And uh, I know that multiple businesses that are praying that those things get offloaded because everyone's waiting for their product. Let's hit a controversial subject. Right oh, now. here we go again. A little bit of one. Yeah. Sea lions. Uh, oh, boy. Docile, beautiful creatures. Yeah, yeah. Many children love sea lions. You've mentioned women and children many times. Yeah, yeah, They yeah. love to have a little well, fluffy uh, sea lion doll. I, I, again, you don't feel the same way. I, do I, I, I don't. And, and for the most part, I, you know, I love Mother Nature and I am a firm believer in, in uh, you know. Yeah, what? I, I, what? I don't know. I, I'll leave that one alone. I, yeah, I'll put it this way. I would have to say the, the number one uh, overpopulated species in our ocean is the California sea lion, without a question of a doubt. And it makes it real tough actually impossible on a lot, a lot of given days to bring people fishing because there are so many of them that we cannot conduct a business and try to provide uh, you know good fishing because there's one two sometimes four on every spot and you know again i love fishing for children and 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 women and when i see 
people catch short fish. I'm a steward of the ocean. I have to abide by the rules and regulations given to us by the Department of Fish and Game. So you so, catch a small well, calico, bass, small calico bass, a short halibut, you know, and for years we throw them back, no problem. Now we throw those things back and they don't get five feet, 10 feet, and they get eaten by the sea lions. So how is that helping our future when these things are being taken by these, you know, overpopulated species? And again, there's not enough sharks because they were over commercialized and that's a lot of times in countries well below us and they're migratory they come up with warm water and there's just not enough predators so the food chain's kind of out of whack that if you will half half as controversial as i was hoping well that was, the, that was cogent, that, that was the politically argument. correct um very nice yeah, yeah you surprised way about, me way way about doing it but but again they're they're not one of my favorite creatures and mind you, I love the things when, when they're fun. Sometimes we get happy sea lions and you'll pull up to a spot and they just, it's like they've been trained in the circus and they jump all over the place. And for those guys that don't bother us, I love them. It's part of mother nature. You know, I've got some bad news. Uh-oh. We've come to the end of this pot. We have, it seems like we've been going for 30 seconds, but yeah. we've been going an hour and a half or more, which only means we're going to have to have you back. Again. Well, uh, it'd be a pleasure. And I know there's probably about 4,000 things we didn't touch on, oh, but, but at, at any rate, we, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. It again. <clears throat> It'll give me a chance to heal up from that sheephead call, and I promise we will never show you that, that ever again. That is going to add to some uh, nightmares tonight. I'm it's going to add someone some nightmares mentally. Because I got mentally. a close-up of that. Yeah. Tino Valentine, the freedom every single night out of 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro. Correct. Love Great to have fishing. you come out fishing. Come on out. Uh, there's a lot of places to, to go and a lot of you know boats to choose, but uh, I promise you, if you do come out in the freedom, we will try 100%, not to mention I'll give you a joke every time you leave. All right, Freeman Adventures, everybody. Again, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Click the little bell so we can notify you when we have a new show. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if freshwater is your thing, it's Bass Bros, where my two kids are. Same thing, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Tino, you're the man. Phil Friedman, nice to see you again. Let's do some fishing. All right, thanks again. Very welcome.